Obamacare has problems. This may seem obvious, but our president's national health care law is simply riddled with glitches and complications. And no, the problem is not just the website. A failure in the press coverage of the healthcare exchange's rocky launch has been in allowing people to believe that the problem is simply a glitchy website. This is a failure of language. The quote, website, has become a confusing stand-in phrase for any problem relating to the law's underlying infrastructure. No one has a very good word to describe everything that that infrastructure structure encompasses. It's everything about Obamacare, the road that leads to the store, the store itself, the payment systems, the computer system, and the delivery, everything's wrong with Obamacare. It's the problems in the infrastructure, indeed much more than just a website, that pose such deep problems for the law. Now the problems with the website are the difficulties consumers are facing when they try to log on and shop for insurance coverage. These problems, such as error messages, site timeouts, difficulty logging into an account, making it, make it hard for an individual to buy coverage through the marketplace. They are the reason why some people have made upwards of 20 attempts at purchasing a plan. These are the problems that are being fixed fastest and that are the least serious. The eligibility problems strike when consumers send in their information and the government's computer systems tell them whether they're eligible for Medicaid, health insurance subsidies, or nothing at all. The system is returning incorrect data for many applicants, meaning they might be eligible for Medicaid and not know it, or they might think that they have subsidies that will later be revoked. The insurance problems are seen by the insurance companies. Health plans are supposed to get a report when someone uses healthcare.gov to buy their health insurance policy. Those reports are full of inaccurate data, such as the wrong address, or are being sent in duplicate. One insurance company reported getting one of these reports, known as an 834 transmission, that said that one individual had three spouses. The person was not, for the record, a polygamist. And it's not just private insurers. The federal system is also failing to sign people up for Medicaid. No one quite knows the extent of the problems in each of these areas. No one knows how long it'll be until all these systems are working tolerably well. No one has any idea how long it'll be until they're working smoothly. And if this was all it was, a multi-month delay and a lot of frustration and problems for people trying to sign up, that would be bad enough. That would be a story worth covering aggressively and constantly until the problems clear up. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. Indeed, if the experience of using the site improved but the back-end problems didn't, it's possible to imagine press coverage moving on, and that would be a disaster. Now, even Obama doesn't seem to fully recognize the full problems of the Affordable Care Act. To the White House, the difference between success and failure is straightforward. They need to entice a, a sufficient number of young and healthy adults into the new insurance marketplaces that open on October the 1st. Now, I want to be clear on this. No one said that success was letting kids up to age 26 stay on their parents' health insurance plan. No one said it was regulating insurers or covering preventive care. Instead, everyone in the White House shared a singular definition. Success meant setting up the exchanges and attracting enough young people that premiums stayed low. But this isn't happening. A majority of young people are not signing up for Obamacare, realizing that it's actually a bad deal. And, you know, we're now we're going to be getting into a Medicaid problem. The problem for Medicaid is that a lot of red states are flatly refusing to participate, which means that millions of low-income people who need health insurance and are eligible for it under the law aren't going to get it. Now, the White House didn't believe these red states could hold out very long. The Medicaid deal was simply too good. The federal government pays 100% of the costs for the first three years and 90% thereafter. Refusing free federal dollars is hard for even the most hardcore ideologue, which is why conservative governors in Arizona, Florida, and Ohio have battled their Republican legislators to sign their states up. Now, the remaining red states would fold, the White House assumed, as soon as Obamacare was seen as a success, or at least seen as permanent. But for that to happen, the insurance exchanges, the law's most visible, ambitious, and far-reaching innovation, would have to work. And now we're getting into the exchange problem. The key to the exchanges was getting enough young and healthy people to turn out. The reason is simple. Insurers price their products at the average expected cost of the people signing up, plus a bit more for overhead and profits. So if the average person signing up is relatively sick, premiums rise, even if they're relatively healthy, premiums fall. Now sick or older people, the administration figured, would be desperate to sign up for the health insurance, and in a sense that was the problem. They'd be so eager that they'd sign up in much greater numbers than the young healthy people needed to keep the premiums low. 
Attracting those young and healthy people was thus the core challenge. The White House figured that if they got 7 million people to sign up for the exchanges in the first year, about 2.7 million needed to be young. The Obama healthcare team expended enormous effort figuring out how to reach these 2.7 million young and healthies. They modeled where they lived. They figured out which TV channels they watched and which social networks they used. They learned who their most important validators were. The White House was planning a huge campaign to get young people to sign up at healthcare.gov, and they believed that once there, they needed a friction-free website experience to make sure they purchased health insurance. Older, sicker folks will reload the webpage until they get through, or they'll sign up for over the phone. But the White House expected that young folks, by and large, wouldn't tolerate a lot of hassle. And this was correct. Indeed, though, the website experience right, right now is all friction, and this was where the whole thing collapsed. In meetings with reporters and on the front page of healthcare.gov, the White House is talking about the ease of using the phone rather than the web, and that's a deter that would certainly lead to a disastrous demographic imbalance in the exchanges. The problem is precisely that the people who really need the insurance will be patient and persistent. The people who don't need insurance as badly may not be, and if that happens then in a year or two, costs are going to rise sharply for those sicker older people left in the exchanges, and Republicans who see Obamacare's problems as a path to success in 2014 won't even think about expanding Medicaid. Now Obama has time to right the ship, but not much. Healthcare experts suggest the website needs to be running smoothly by Thanksgiving at the latest, and even then it's possible that the initial disruption will produce a worse risk pool in year one, leading to higher premiums in year two. Obamacare isn't just a political abstraction anymore. Its success doesn't depend or spin on solidarity. What matters for the law, and for the people who are depending on it, is how well it actually works, and so far it's not working well at all. Even when that changes, our coverage of the healthcare law will change too. Now let me know whether you signed up for Obamacare in the comments below. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you thought I was pointing out some helpful problems in Obamacare. And I will see you next time. Bye!